Thank you, welcome back to Fakultas Hukum UPN Veteran Jakarta Podcast. We are today very glad to have a special office, special guest, Dr. Joachim Stelma from Germany. He is retired director assistant EPO, European Patent Office, Munich. So this morning we will discuss about the patent situation in European and Germany and also his comment about Indonesian Patent Office. He studied actually from uh, organic chemistry in Munster and Verbuch and then uh, In 1979 until 1982, scientific science, science assistant radiation biology in Munster, yeah, and then uh, he is also uh, of working in a Germany patent office uh, since 1982 until 1986, and uh, at the European patent office since 1986, and then best tutor. For from 1990 to 1994, this is special tutor. Let me you can explain about this later. Yeah. And then best examiner, examiner also uh, since 1994 until retirement 2015, and since 2016 until 2020, his work as a technical expert in the patent office in Munich. Okay, please welcome Mr. Joaquin. Yeah, Thank you. to Jakarta, especially to our uh, campus. UPN Fiji in Pondok Labu. Thank you very Okay, uh, please, uh, Mr. Joachim, um, during your study, do you have any experience? Why you are interesting study biology and then you are working for patent office? Please. please. You see, I uh, enjoyed very much working in the, at the university and actually uh, I wanted to stay there. I wanted to uh, become a professor, but that At that time, it was very difficult to continue working in German universities because uh, there were very few places. Everything was changed. There was a big change in, in, the, uh, in the university. So I had to decide to do something where I could continue. And then uh, there was a possibility to join the German patent office. And since I'm very much interested in languages, The European Patent Office was, of course, uh, a very interesting opportunity for me. The three languages of the European Patent Office are German, English and French. So I speak fluent uh, French and English. Uh, and uh, well, I, I enjoyed very much uh, working as a patent uh, examiner. And I was always interested in teaching, so that's why I Uh, was a tutor, the, uh, well, d d did the formation for a lot of colleagues. And then, um, yeah, best, what is best? Yes. Um, in the beginning, in the European Patent Office, it was decided to separate uh, search and examination. So, in the branch of the Patent Office in The Hague, search was conducted, and in Munich, Uh, examination was conducted. The idea behind that was that uh, these are actually two different uh, works. I mean, the search is really looking into literature, databases, and so on. This is people are very who are very keen on that. The other thing is examination. You have to write communication. You have to uh, translate what you find during the search into communications. You open a dialogue with the Uh, applicant and then you you clarify all the problems uh, uh, because when when a patent is granted it should me, uh, meet all the, the 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 points of the EPC so these two works were separated because it was thought that it would be the quality would be higher the idea is not bad but it depends of, of course it there's one fundamental condition the one has to 100% know what the other needs and this didn't work so uh, at a certain day it was decided to introduce best b e s t bringing examination and search together oh so <laughs> yeah there was another uh, okay there, there were yeah, another. The so um, um i It was uh, decided to to send tutors from Munich to The Hague because the search was done in The Hague. And uh, I was one of the first tutors who went uh, for four years to The Hague. And there I did the formation for some 40 colleagues, uh, teaching them how to uh, 
right communications to communicate with the uh, with the applicant and finally to grant. So that is uh, best and that is uh, today. Today there are only best examiners in the European Patent Office. In the German office, uh, this was never the case. Uh, in the German office you start both, you learn both search and organization when you start to be an examiner. So then after my retirement, well, I, I enjoyed very much uh, inventive step because uh, that was for me a bit annoying that um, uh, this inventive step was treated a bit uh, yeah, with a bad reputation, so that's why I published uh, several papers on it. I developed a, an approach to understand inventive step. And then uh, for the last, since my retirement, I worked a couple of years in the patent attorney's office uh, writing uh, appeal decisions and opposition divisions for the patent attorneys. And since then, yeah, I'm free. For example, to go a couple of weeks to Italy. <laughs> <laughs> to come to Indonesia also is free, eh? Okay, then compared to your experience as a tutor, as a minor or inventive step, this is which one is more interesting for you based on your passion and your your knowledge? Yeah, I enjoyed very much to 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 talk about the inventive step because as I told you, inventive step has a very bad reputation. Um, people say inventive step is impossible. For there are some people saying you know, novelty that's easy, but inventive step that's impossible. Huh? Everybody who has so work on patents know that there are the three fundamental conditions: novelty, inventive step, and industrial ap applica applic applicability. Sorry. Yeah. And uh, well, industrial applicability is normally no problem because if you pay for a patent, you want to sell something. Um, apart from one, uh, some very few moral ethic aspects, and there was a long discussion whether you should patent toxic uh, cocktails for performing the the death penalty in in states where the death penalty uh, is in vigor. So there, it was a long discussion whether such patents should be granted for moral. Uh, eth eth ethic reasons, but uh, it was decided to do it. But apart from that, industrial applicability is, is no problem. Novelty, well, most people say novelty, it's easy. It's not always easy, but uh, uh, inventive step, yeah, as I told you, many people think it's impossible. So that was in when I started in the German office, and uh, I was always interested in inventive step. And then I joined the European Patent Office and there at that time was a large discussion about inventive step because the office had started in 83. I joined it uh, in 86. So there were a lot of things. What do we do with inventive step? And then I had two tutors who bo both taught me to work with inventive step with the problem solution approach, which was at that time developed by uh, someone who has written a long article, Mr. Zabo, uh, an Hungarian. Uh, he published a paper, The Problem Solution Approach. And uh, there was a lot of discussion how to use it, whether it was good or not. So uh, when I had an interview to, to apply for a post, uh, my future director asked me, how do you treat inventive step in the German patent office? And I had to tell him, Unfortunately, there is no exact uh, concept. Huh? But uh, during when I wrote that examination, when I wrote uh, letters, uh, I got some nasty uh, answers from applicants. So I decided to develop uh, a strategy for inventive step. I, that what I published in several uh, publications. Oh, I see. So the, actually, you have experience in uh, Germany Patent Office. Then cannot can cannot be applicable your experience in the European Patent Office because the, the approaching for uh, inventive steps is very different. No, it's not so different, but uh, there are some differences. And eh? I also compared in the uh, lecture the the concept of inventive step uh, in the U U.S. Patent Office, in the British Patent Office, yeah, and the German Patent Office. So there are slight differences. For experts, that's very interesting. I refer to my, in my uh, uh, lecture, refer to an article published just a couple of months ago by a German patent attorney who heavily criticized the problem solution approach. 
And uh, when I published my uh, an article in SIPA, that's Chartered Industrial Property Agents uh, Journal of the British Patent Attorneys, uh, there was a, a very rusk uh, rep a reply of a British patent attorney that another British attorney defended my approach. So it's an, it's an interesting discussion how to really deal inventive step in a most objective manner. And it's the, the, the problem is that many people say it's completely subjective because it depends what is the knowledge of the patent examiner, what is the knowledge of the patent attorney. So it's complete, this is different, so it is subjective. And I tried by this uh, graphical representation of inventive step to make it the most objective possible. Uh, so in this case, the key point for the registrations of patent is the uh, inventive step. Eh? Well, uh, if you, that's, that's one of the points uh, w w where I'm very much interested in. Inventive step, uh, the level of inventive step has a lot of consequences for patents. Mm -hmm. When the European Patent Office was started, there was an international conference by the eight uh, member states at that time. And the, at that time, the president and the vice president of the European Patent Office, they uh, pu published a paper. And in this paper, you will find the sentence, on the long run, the success of the European Patent Office will depend on a reasonable uh, uh, excess of inventive step. So inventive step has consequences. If in inventive step, for example, the, the level of inventive step uh, is is uh, um, responsible for the number of patent of appli applications. So if the level is low, then more people would apply for a patent. Mm -hmm. And the second consequence, the lower the level of inventive step is, you activate, you, you, you provoke uh, the patent trolls. That's these people who fake uh, um, patents they get these low-level patents and they attack big companies. So the lower inventive step is, the more you have. It's no joke. Unfortunately, in, in 2022, uh, 50, more than 50% of what all patent lawsuits were done by, by these people uh, who do not have a company, but they attack big companies uh, uh, to, to, to get money from them. Uh, IBM was, I think, the last who was attacked by them. So that's the, yeah, and, and the third point is inventive step is, of course, level of inventive step is very important for small and uh, medium companies. Uh, if you cannot rely on inventive step, then the big companies will ask you to abandon your patent or to pay. So mm -hmm. it is very important that a reasonable level of inventive step can be guaranteed for small and medium companies. The big companies, they have enough money they can attack, so that's not the problem. So that's some consequences. There are others, but I think these are the most important. Why inventive step, in my eyes, is a very crucial point, and it should, not, it should always be uh, very much taken into consideration. I agree with you. It's very cru crucial and also very important thing for uh, inventive step steps. Okay, uh, Mr. Joachim, uh, Dr. Joachim, what I mean is uh, you are working for EPO, European Patent Office. This is consists 19 countries. So what is the 39. challenge? 39. 39, sorry, 39. Oh yeah, 39. Yeah, 39 European countries. 39 country, uh, countries, so very big. And then what is the challenges for you as a patent office working there? Uh, is there challenges because of language or because of uh, registration? Based on your experience, please. I enjoyed it very much to work in, in an international uh, surrounding. Uh, I enjoyed it very much to have uh, colleagues from all over Euro Europe, Italian colleagues, English colleagues, Swedish colleagues, uh, colleagues from Hungary. So I, I liked it very much. and. Uh, um, okay, you have the three official languages, uh, English, uh, German and French. So when my telephone rang, uh, it could be German, English or French. And I, 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 I mean, I'm someone who likes languages. Uh, if you have problems with languages, then it may be difficult to work in such an international office. But uh, if you if you like, I mean, we had uh, meals together. There were, of course, people 
who met their own nationality. There was a table with Italian people. There was a table with Spanish. But very often you you had uh, uh, meals together and you could talk to people, crack jokes in the different languages. So I enjoyed it very much. And I think uh, if you think of, of, of the future of the patent system, it is very helpful that you create international offices to uh, continue for the future of Europe. I mean, it is absolutely necessary to, to have a common uh, European uh, opinion for also for a lot of political reasons. I see. So in this case, do you think there's any uh, regulations that's quite good enough for European countries members for patent office? Yeah, I think at, at, at this moment, the, the success is there. I mean, if you have 188,000 patent applications, it is absolutely accepted. I, I remember this article when the office started, there was, the people said, if we get 8,000 patent applications, we will be able to continue. 8,000 in 1983. Now we have this year uh, 50 uh, years uh, European Patent Office. Uh, there are some festivities. We, we listened to that yesterday in, on the, in the internet. Uh, the president speaks uh, to a lot of uh, people now, 50 years EPO. And uh, well, from that uh, part of uh, the system, if, if uh, 188,000 patent applications and more, I'm, I think this year there will be more. And uh, I, I think within a couple of years, there will be again the, the, the level of 200,000 patent applications per year, which of course, I mean, the consequence is you have a lot of, uh, uh, you need a lot of staff. We have some 7,000, 8,000 uh, staff in, in the three. There is the main uh, building in Munich, then the branch in The Hague still exists. Then we have uh, some 300 examiners and staff working in Berlin in the, the old uh, resident of the German patent office before the war that was in Berlin. Then um, after the Second World War, Berlin was the divided city, so the, the German patent office went to Munich. But in the, the rooms of the old German patent office, there's still, there's still some 300, 400 patent examiners working. So this is for European patent office, 200,000 applicants per year, yeah? 188,000. 188,000, my goodness. Per year, wow! Yeah, it's, it's, it's the number is incredible. Eh? If you yeah. think all the fees and all the, yeah, it's it's. But I mean, if people, you see, people are interested in patents. Huh? Otherwise, they wouldn't file. Yeah. And what what the main point is is there enough? Is the level of inventorship high enough to cope with this? That's something that um, it's not my concern, I'm private, huh? but that's a concern of the responsible people in the patent offices, also in other patent offices. I mean, uh, if you lower inventive step, you get more patent applications. If you want that, you can get fees. But uh, uh, as I told you, the consequences of a level of inventive step which is too low, then you activate patent trolls you, you, you risk the whole system. I mean, innovation, patent, that means uh, limited um, uh, access for, uh, well, uh, officially you, you can use something for a limited time, but exclusively. And this is only justified if a patent contributes to innovation. But if you grant patents which do not contribute to innovation, eh, then you actually attack the patent system itself. itself. Yeah. That's another consequence of, I mean, inventive step, uh, I tried to show you, has a lot of consequences and eh, the level of inventive step. Depending what, what I mean, it depends, of, of course, also upon the, 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 the country. Eh? I don't know whether there are many patent trolls in Indonesia, but in, in Europe and in, in the States, there are. 
Yeah. But actually, the fee for uh, applicants for applications the same price. If uh, either low consequences or higher consequences, the same. The 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 fees are the same. But uh, well, I gave a lecture in 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 Shenzhen in China a couple of years ago. Then uh, the chairman of this uh, session was an uh, American NGO. He saw my badge, European Patent Office, and he addressed me. I have to complain about your fees. They are much too high. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's we talked about the community patent. Uh, I, he said, I, I, I have to pay 10 times the fees that I, for Europe, Euro patent, European patent, than I pay for US patent. Uh, and it's the same number of inhabitants, more or less. Uh, Europe, some 300 million, and uh, United States, some million. So it's, we have to go down with your fees. Uh, so I said, okay, I'm going to communicate well and back in Munich. But the situation, I mean, the community patent in my eyes is absolutely necessary to avoid this, and uh, but it's yeah, it's not yet done. Sorry, for one patent uh, register, how much the, the 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 fee? It is it is said. I I'm not uh, completely. Uh, I don't know whether it's true, but I saw figures that you pay uh, per um, PCT application uh, 100,000 euros. So uh, that's a lot of but money. But this is per five year or per one year? That's for the 20 years. Oh, for 20 years. Yeah. Then, oh, one but year. then you have the fees, the annual fees. That's for the grant and all the different countries. And then you have the annual fees. You pay every year uh, a certain fee until you want to give it up and then it's open to, to everybody. Huh? Very expensive. It is very, very expensive. Okay. But uh, yeah, that's why I think this is when people ask me, sometimes people ask me, I have an idea, I want to file a patent. I tell them first try the German patent office because the fees are one tenth of, of uh, that. Yeah. And then you can get a search report, and then you can get a, a first communication, and then there is officially the possibility, the certain rule, to go to the European Patent Office. Huh? With this, with the same application where you have a search report from the German Patent Office, uh, you can go and we'll continue then in the European Patent Office, if it's worthwhile. Huh? But you yeah. get already a good opinion, a good search report in the German Patent Office, but with the much uh, less, less, less money. Yes, but automatically when we register on the European Patent Office, it means register on the all the members, 39 members of the... No, 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 that's PCT. Oh. Europe, that's... The, yeah, uh, the, 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 no, the, the European, you, you can have to cross. It's not valid automatically in oh. all the countries. You, you, oh. you say, uh, there are people who just want to, to file a patent in three or four countries. Huh? Oh. For example, the big, com the big companies, they're just interested in the, the most, uh, uh, the biggest uh, countries, you see, Germany, mm. England, France. France, and perhaps Italy, or the, yeah. that's all. Uh, they are not interested in all the small countries. So that's very often, but uh, of course, if you have something like a pioneer invention, you would, all, yeah. of course, try to, to get it in as much as, 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 as countries as possible. Huh? You can, yeah. but then you have to pay more. But you decide at the, at the moment with PCT, you cross, and also for Europe, you cross the countries you want. Uh, sorry, just curiosity, eh? uh, compared to your experience, which one better for me? Either I register, let's say, in France, and then another one, uh, Germany, and then England, British, and then also another country, in, uh, instead of EPO. No, it is, uh, there are a lot of uh, advantages if, if you file an, uh, an EPO file, though, um, uh, when, when, the after, when a European patent is, is granted, then uh, nine months after the grants, the opposition procedure is uh, gone, it's over. So after that, uh, this European patent falls in a bundle of national patents. And then if you want to claim to, to have it nullified, yeah. then you have to file and an, uh, an, uh, you have to go to each country which is mentioned on the patent. Uh, so if you are eight or nine countries, you have to go to the courts in each and every country. That's the, but the, the whole procedure is much uh, easier 
uh, and I think well um, I don't know the 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 where the how the fees are in the in the in the in the European countries but I think if you have to pay a patent attorney in every country and all this so I think to file if you have a, a good idea a good uh, invention uh, the European way is much much easier than to file a patent in, in all the different countries so what is the interesting point uh, register patent in the EPO, uh, European Patent Office, because the price is so high. Yeah, but if you compare it, uh, to the, 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 the different European countries, uh, it's still, uh, well, I talked about this PCT application. You, you do not have to, to file a PCT application. You can file a normal Euro, European yeah. application, and this is not so expensive. Yeah. The PCT is just uh, for the big companies, uh, because yeah. they normally want to to um, uh, have patents in, in, in most, not only in the European system, but the, but the PCT, you cover also, for example, United States, you cover, uh, I think Indonesia is is, is member of the, the PCT, yes. so you could uh, cross Indonesia, then the patent would be valid in, in Indonesia too. It mm -hmm. would come to the European, you have the international phase, and then you have the national phase, where uh, the patent is and the application is treated. Okay, so it's with the PCT instead of other patent office. Yeah? Depends. It depends <laughs> yeah. what you invent and how much money you want to spend. Yes, of course. Yes. That's, yeah. uh, I mean, you, you must uh, make a difference. Uh, if you, as a person, uh, you have a good idea uh, and it would cost you 1,000 euros or 10,000 euros, you can do that uh, your own or you can ask money from them. But if you think of the millions of millions uh, of euros to invest, for example, for the production of a vaccine or yeah. a new drug. Yeah. I mean, you, you want to be, or you, you should have a good possibility to earn money with that if you invest so much money. So this is really, you need protection. But yes. as I said, uh, the problem is patents should be granted for innovation and not for sex. So I mean, okay, because you are saying about this uh, patent, this is uh, like dual du dual faces uh, about the patent. They are decided to protect the inventions, but for the other things, we have to give another services or another functions uh, for the peoples. Yeah, let's say vaccine. Yeah, vaccine is this is one of the who is the inventor of vaccine is very good because helping other people, a lot of peoples. But if we are patented. So the prices should be higher. So helping the people or make the money? Uh, based on your experience, you have 33 years, right? 33 years experience, please. Yeah. What do you think about this? Yeah, yeah but um, I think you must always be aware of the balance. Huh? You have, as inventor, you have uh, different possibilities. Um, somewhere in the 70s, there was uh, were some uh, very known American biochemists, they made a very uh, invention which was very important for all uh, biologic, biology and biochemistry and they decided not to ask a patent because they said we want to make it available to everybody. The other possibility is if, if you don't ask for a patent, uh, being an inventor for a vaccine, then everybody can do it and you won't get money for it. So you, has, you have to make the decision, what do I want? And then, I mean, there are different ideas. I, I read, I'm not sure what actually happened. I read in India, the Indian uh, um, the government wants to uh, create a database for, for, for some patents that should be, uh, the, the, the technical teacher of this should be available to everybody. That's, that's all ideas about patents. I mean, you have a protection, you have innovation, because when in, in, at the very moment the patent expires, it's available to the public. Everybody can use it. Um, so, um, I mean, you cannot give a clear incentive to a, a clear answer to everybody. This must be decided on a personal or political level. Um, uh, whether you want to earn money or you, you 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 want to give it to the public, that's that's a possibility, of course. But then, whether it's better um, in India, there was a problem that uh, the big uh, pharmaceutical companies they sold drugs at the prices in Europe, and uh, everybody knows 
uh, uh, the vast majority of Indian people cannot pay these prices. So uh, there was a struggle uh, between the big uh, familiar camp companies and uh, uh, the Indian government and then the in India decided to I think they, they, they produced their own drugs. But then the big pharmaceutical companies went down with their prices to meet the requirements of, of the, the, the Indian government. So you see, there are a lot of possibilities when you think of the balances between having a patent, having um, uh, the mono monopoly for a certain time, and discussing what should be uh, open to everybody. Yeah? That's something wh where w the people involved have to decide. Yes, I agree with you because this is balancing, eh? Because uh, for your own purpose and also public interest, you have to share yes, about it. Yes. Thank you very much. But is there any last statement from you to our viewers about the patent? This is uh, what you suggest for us to to be inventor or to be whatever. For, for patent in Indonesia especially, what we have to do? Please, your request. Yeah, we had some discussions during the last days. I'm, I'm here a couple of days and I think uh, what is uh, uh, most important if you want to increase patenting in Indonesia is to inform people about patents. Huh? I mean, um, if uh, per people who work in industry do not know what a patent is, how can they file a patent? And uh, the system, I mean, there are, of course, different possibilities. I'm aware of the system in the United States. In the United States, um, most big universities, they have a patent department. They have uh, people who collect the scientific work, they file patents, and then they offer these patents to the big American companies. And then, well, perhaps every five years, every 10 years, there's something which is really interesting, they get the money. So this is one possibility. During, when, during my time as patent examiner, I in, examined a lot of patents from American universities. And uh, yes, as the, the, the main point is to inform people about patents. If, 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 if you, yeah, what, however you, whatever you do, if you, if you give lectures at the universities, I mean, someone who does his uh, exams in chemistry or in physics or in medicine, he is, at least in Germany, you get no information what a patent is. So that should, that would be one proposal to, to uh, give lectures at the end of the studies, at least to inform people what is a patent, how do I write a patent, and uh, uh, then you can expect people to do that. And uh, for example, another proposal in, in Munich, I know that for, the, for both universities, the universities have connections to uh, um, uh, society which has connections to patent attorneys and they, they uh, take care that the university does not have the highest prices so they get a reasonable price for the patent attorneys. That's all possibilities if you want to think about the future of patents, for example, in Indonesia. Thank you very much. That's Dr. Joachim Stelmach. Thank you for your attention. And uh, Imam Haryanto to say thank you to all of you. And Salam Bela Negara from UPN Fiji, Pondok Lagu, Jakarta Selatan. Thank you. Thank you, Joachim.